Um, we were at the end of the lesson, approaching danger to old to move for the part six. Mm, okay. Um, um, whose file that we were working on last week? It was mine. It was mine. Would you uh, like to share? Yeah, I think you can just um, you can just uh, you can just share again your your um your screen. Oh, share screen. Um. Yeah. While waiting, um. Any one of you managed to do or to update on your own, your this work or, or is there any any question or any doubt? Anything? Some of them just joined this week, so yes, sorry. Um, can we? Uh, There's a question from Shafiq. Can we use conversion rate instead? Yes. Why not? Um. Um. Depends. It really. Um. <clears throat> what we would like to have, um, or what we can use, strongly depends on what we want to do. What do we want to do in the end? For example, yeah. So if, for example, um, uh, because if you would like to do um, just a simple mass balance and then we don't have data on the on the reactor or on the reactions itself, because sometimes or not sometimes, most of the times, if we are on the user side, for example, we are not the owner of the or the developer of a technology. Uh, we don't normally have the insights or the the knowledge about the reactions or the reactor. So what we do know, uh, what we do have, is um, like a historical data, and then the, we have a kind of like um, yeah, we would like to maintain the conversions of the reactor um, at a certain level, for example, because we would like to maintain our production capacity. Uh, so we will do whatever it is uh, to make sure that we can get the same level of conversion. So in that case, since we don't have the knowledge of the reaction and we know that we are going to maintain the conversions and then we just would like to know what happens to the rest of the plant. So in that sense, yes, we can have or we have to use. Yeah, um, there's no other way out. We have to use the conversion reactor. <coughs> is that is that clear? Um, will I make myself clear or no? Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and in in this case, I think Shafiq, you can you can also use um a conversion reactor, because um uh one one thing yeah uh to start with the uh, with the with the simulation one thing to start with is uh, it's also good to use it is based on practical um practical um experience yeah. So, um, because in in in, um, in in many of the simulations, we will be using uh, recycles. There will be recycle loop around the reactor. Like in this case, you will see later on there will be a recycle of unreacted methanol. So in that sense, it will then, because as you understand the from the equation, that the uh, where is that equation? Eh? Um, yeah. So for if you um, uh, from the equations, if you can see this. So this equation, hey, can you see my screen? No, we can't. No. Is that the same screen? Yeah, generate PNP monitor. Anyhow, start sharing. Be patient, yeah. I think my laptop is a little bit slow today. I'm sure it's okay. Um. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, if you, if you open that appendix B of Troton, uh, 
um, you can see the react uh, the the kinetics yeah, while while waiting for my laptop. So uh, we can see the 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 the, exp the the kinetics expressions. So it's um the reaction rate of methanol equals to k zero exponent so of this minus e zero r t and then multiplied by the partial pressure of methanol. So if we have a recycle stream <coughs> and um, that recycle stream stop sharing uh, am i okay can you do you see anything yes yes uh, what do you see your uh, appendix b which is ah, okay, okay, okay yeah good um so you can see uh, that there is this partial pressure of metal on. so if you have um, if you have um um, um um, this flow sheet, where's the flow sheet? Let's run. Um, um, so, so we have a, you have a, so this reaction is a function of that partial pressure of methanol. So we have the unreacted methanol over here and it goes up and then goes here and then goes there and then it goes back. To the either to here or to the to the inlet of the reactor, so um, and this uh, this stream this stream yeah, it also brings with it some 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 traces of the DME maybe traces of, of water, so in that sense it will then alter the 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 the, pre, uh, the, the yeah the molar uh, concentrations of methanol over here, which also alter alter the the partial pressure of methanol. So if we have a different partial pressure over here. Uh, compared to the previous ones so that means we will have a different compositions over here so if we have a different compositions over here and then in the end we'll have a different amount of uh, or concentrations of methanol coming back as well so this whole thing if we cannot keep the concentrations of methanol here constant this whole reaction this whole re recycle it will make the convergence of this flow sheet difficult a little bit mm -hmm. okay so um, in that sense, having this um, as a conversion reactor also help a little bit uh, to start with, um, uh, so that then we can we can we can fix the conversions over here. So whatever methanol coming in, so we will, we know uh, whatever we know the amount of methanol going out, and then and then the concentration is somehow fixed. So in that sense, it will help the recycles a little bit. But we will see that later on. Yeah, maybe, I think. Maybe um, maybe um, 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 uh, Shafiq can use the conversion reactor, and then the rest we can just um, follow the um, this um, kinetics, and then we will see, yeah. And then you can you can we can we can share uh, with each other. Um, okay. Um, um, any other questions? Why are you laughing, Shafiq? So um, now Aisha, I think you can you can share the screen. All right. Sure. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, no, yeah. Can you put that um, Skype windows to the... Uh, uh, that one, yeah. So we are now... Um, tell me where we are. We are now we in... Are at, uh, downstream of... Uh, the reactor. Okay, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Okay, very good. So um, now you have... Um, you um you cool it down uh, stream six to stream seven mm -hmm. yeah and then the, um, i'm assuming that this stream seven temperature is the same as uh, what is in the mass balance yeah yes yes okay okay so now um in this case yeah in this case um uh, uh one way to 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 close this i think you can just um um Put it on hold. Go to that home. Uh, I think home. Uh, put it on hold, and then the, um, um, you go back to that E two O two. That um, the preheater, yeah, that one, the preheater of the reactor. Because uh, we are going to get the duty from that preheater by cooling down the reactor floor, uh, the reactor outlet, right? All right. Okay. How do you do that? So um uh, um double click on that E two O two. Cool or uh, that, the preheater. Ah, uh, that preheater. 
because we're going to get the heat. The heat is going to be obtained from the uh, from the um, from the outlet of the reactor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, in this case, um, in this case, yeah, in this case, um, uh, this temperature that because in this in this in this heat exchanger, you specify. Uh, we have specified the outlet react uh, the outlet temperature to be 250 degrees C, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's the, the specification now. So um, and then to get to that number, we need to supply that 1. Point, um, yeah, 10 to the power of 7 kilojoule per hour. So that amount of energy. So um, if you can memorize that number, yeah. And then you go back to that, uh, and then you go to the um, the uh, the outlet cooler of the uh, reactor. Uh, that one, and then you can see how much energy that it is being produced. So it's okay. only two point, uh, yeah, to the power of six. So it's only like um, one fifth of the one fifth of the um, um, uh, energy required for the inlet stream. Can you can you follow? No. Uh, you open the two windows. So open this. This is you keep it open, and then you open again the other one. All right. Okay. So now, uh, put them uh, next to each other. So you can see, yeah. Uh, um. So in the in the stream number uh stream number four to five, you want to increase the temperature from one fifty four to two fifty degrees C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um and then um and then to do that you will need you will need 10 million, 10 million kilojoule per hour, yeah, mm -hmm. 10 million kilojoule per hour of energy, yeah, the, the, and where, where your pointer is aiming now, yeah, mm -hmm. it's 10 million kilojoule per hour, right? Right. Um, and then, that, that is then the amount of energy that you need, yeah, to get mm -hmm. uh, to that 250 degrees C, and then the, um, be careful as well, if you see that stream number four, it is already partly vapor, so it's not completely liquid anymore. So it's seven to eight percent vapor. So um, in this, in this, in this, uh, uh, um, from the stream four to five, we deal with the latent heat because mm -hmm. we are changing the the phase from liquid to vapor, and then increase the temperature vapor to two fifty degrees C. Yeah, and then the um, so hence because of this latent heat, you we will need a huge amount of energy, which is then this ten to the power of um, ten million, ten million kilojoule per hour of energy. And then if we if in this E two O two cold E two O two cold, um, reducing the temperature from three seventy four to two seventy eight, we will release only, yeah, two millions. Can you follow at two millions. Yeah. So do I. Instead of do instead of inputting this temperature, do I input this amount of energy? Yes, exactly. So basically, uh, basically, because what you can do, um, you can see here now. Now, um, before I answer the questions, so uh, what you can see here, if you come, if you see the 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 the, um, the number of energy that you're producing, mm -hmm. um, do you think you will have more energy left? Uh, for this stream seven, or you will need even more energy. Uh, to be, energy. Yeah, you will need more energy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in that sense, in that sense, yeah. So which temperature that you would want to remove? This one here. That oh. one there. Yeah. Why? Because I mean, this is just how much we heat we can recover and it doesn't necessarily have to go to 278. Okay. And then go right. on, go on, go on. And so, I guess the limitations is any temperature more than 250? Um, okay, almost there, almost there, yeah. You are right that 278 is kind of like a soft constraint, yeah. So you don't need to go to that or you can even go down lower than 278. Which is correct, but then, but then the, um, your amount of energy that you have by cooling it to two seventy eight, for example, is you only have like a point two. Uh, yeah. It's um yeah, it's a point two basically. Uh, while while um to get to the temperature of two fifty, you will need like a one or ten in this case, two on the other one, and then ten in the other uh, in the other case. So um so um um, 
I don't think. I think uh, if you can, you can, you can see this. I don't think that um, reducing the temperature to se to uh, lower than 278 will will make you get another eight. Can you yeah. Follow? Yeah. So yeah. Um, in that sense, I would say, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, um, um, we can we can do uh, many things. Yeah, we can do many things. Among other things is that uh, uh, what I would do is. Um, <coughs> I will just use the whole amount of heat um, in this E two O two. All right. Yeah. So um, because it's in this uh, this this the temperature of the outlet stream, we would like to reduce it to the inlet temperature of the column, basically, right? Mm -hmm. The stream yeah. number nine. Basically, in the end. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to the stream uh, number nine, to the inlet of the column. So basically, we can then um, we will then play around here, and um, I would then remove the outlet temperature of the stream five. Okay. Yeah, I would then remove the outlet temperature of the stream five, and then connect the energy stream from the uh, E two O two cold into that E two O two. Yeah, I will then use this two uh, point two to hit this uh, stream four to stream five and then it will be the temperature will be then be lower than what we would have that we are now having uh, mm -hmm. but in that sense to make it go to 250 we'll have to use another heater all right i see Can you so, follow, yeah? which in that sense it also makes sense practically because in practice you will need to have a backup so we cannot rely on this uh, fluid effluent heat exchanger only to make sure that we can have a constant temperature getting into the reactor. But say, for example, we put this E201 uh -huh. after this process to process the ACG, I think it would be much better. <laughs> yes, exactly. That is that you can, that's exactly. So it's, uh, I said it's uh, among other things. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, uh, um, adding one heater uh, after stream yeah. five is an option. You switching the place is also an option. Um, mm -hmm. it just we need to make sure that we have to supply the uh, right level of energy to that E two O one. Yeah, so um, um, let's do it your way. Okay, sure. So while you're doing this, uh, I think you understand what you're doing. Uh, Shafiq, uh, what is then the negative minus? Okay, stream three five. Uh, four five. Oh, that number, that heat flow, that heat flow means nothing. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you can see now uh, stream three and four. Uh, there's mm -hmm. this heat flow in the bottom. So that's yeah. heat flow means nothing. Means um, it's just like uh, they calculate the heat from a reference point. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, for, from that reference point to go to stream three, it needs to have that amount of energy, seven point seven nine eight something. And then from another reference point to go to that temperature of 0.4, uh, stream 4, you will need 7.27. But then that doesn't mean anything. What is uh, what is really, uh, what, uh, what is important is then from 0.3 to 0.4, what is then the amount of energy that you are giving or you are taking? So in this case, we are giving it 4.2 million. Yeah, exactly. So the delta enthalpy is the uh, thing that we have to be concerned with, not the absolute enthalpy because there is no such thing as absolute enthalpy yeah the delta enthalpy so you will see in your thermodynamics books you will always see delta h no h yeah or you have a different thermodynamic book than i have then that's, that's, that's different questions but um as far as i can um uh, from all of my thermodynamics book i think um, well it, it makes sense yeah there is no such thing as absolute enthalpy uh, simply because we cannot reach to this um, absolute zero of Kelvin, basically or theoretically. Yeah, so, um, right. so um, doctor, I'm trying to retrace back what from, from what I understand because I don't understand all of what you just said. Uh, um, so, uh, and so we understand that E two O two the energy uh X sorry the energy needed to heat stream 4 to stream 5 are uh, can't be sorry the stream here can't be preheated using energy from the reactor effluent and so we would have to utilize the energy from reactor effluent for other hopefully for other heat exchangers no no, no that's, right? that's not what i said 
and that's not what I think you understood it earlier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, uh, okay, so I understood wrong. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how do I... Uh, I don't know if uh, in this Skype, can we have a control? Can I have a control or no? No, yeah. Uh, how do I edit a control? Ah, uh, that one I don't know. So no. Maybe not then. So, um, well, in this case, um, again, yeah, again, yeah, um, we have seen, yeah, we have seen stream 4 to stream 5, you need, you need to have 10 million of energy. Mm -hmm. yes. And then stream 6 to stream 7, yeah, because um, if, if you show, show again the turton next to this, that uh, the flow sheet. The flow sheet? Uh-huh, next to this, um, I mean, uh, you can just um, put it, uh, Let's see. Where's that bullshit? Yeah. This is a good book, yeah? You have to um, like, uh, finish reading this. When, when, oh, oh. Okay, this, this one here. Uh, make it bigger. Yeah, go up. To the flow, uh, flow diagram, yes, exactly. So now, um, you can see, yeah, uh, stream four to stream five is going to be heated uh, by stream six to stream seven. Okay, <laughs> the way that we do now, we don't have this, um, 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 shallow tube heat exchanger, we, we are not, we are not using this, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, what we do is then, um, two heaters, one heat, uh, sorry, two exchanges, so one a heater. One exchanger to heat from stream four to stream five, and another heat exchanger to cool down stream six to stream seven. That's what we have, yeah. 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 So basically, it's basically the same thing. If you see this, the the energy, the energy comes from stream six. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Stream six seven. The energy comes from that those streams into that stream four to stream five. That's basically what is happening. Yeah. There is no mass. There is no mixing in the mass. We, uh, mm -hmm. There's no there's no transfer in the mass. Uh, we have we just only have like a heat transfer. Mm -hmm. So what we do now is then we are trying to um, because we know the temperature of the uh, temperature of the uh, stream six. We know what the temperature of stream seven, and we can even go lower than that. So mm -hmm. uh, we are going to give that heat to stream four five. Yeah. So yeah. in the heat exchanger of stream 4-5, um, we are going to remove the outlet temperature and then All we right. just um, inject the heat from 6-7 to that 4-5 uh, exchanger. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, but we but the, the energy provided here aren't enough to exactly. heat up. Exactly. exactly. So we do have to include another heater yeah that is one of the options so one of the options then uh, we just need to include another heater as additional heater and make sure that the temperature inlet is 250 degrees c to the reactor otherwise okay. we will have a different compositions at the outlet of the reactor so uh, okay. for the time being now um, uh, you can do that options or mm -hmm. you could also do like you said that you are switching the sequence when? of 202 and 201 okay yeah so uh, it's up to you what you want to have huh? All right. okay. which one so i think it's better for you just to add another heater yeah? <laughs> to, to, mm, yeah, to yeah. avoid the confusion but uh, i think you can understand now you have two options at least now okay yeah uh, so now we will choose the more expensive options for the sake of yeah. learning yeah. And then for the sake of uh, uh, electron stability, uh, uh, how do you call it? Yeah, stability. All right. So you hold already, uh, then remove that 250 degrees C. Delete. And then the, um, close this window, the 4-5, yeah. No, no, no. Just close this window. Um, um, Energy here. Ah, and then that uh, energy stream EE202, delete that. No, no, top. No, 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 this one. EE202, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
final duty. Yeah, because we haven't calculated that. Uh, it's still on hold. It's still on hold. You can oh, see okay. it's still on hold. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, now wait, wait. <laughs> yes. Because if you if you make it active now, it will calculate for you the outlet temperature of uh, that stream okay. five, and that is not enough. That is not going to be two fifty degrees C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if you do so, and then you will get a very strange result. All right. Okay. Okay. So you need to make sure now. First, you have to make sure that inlet to the reactor is three uh, is two fifty degrees C because you have. A, so this is also another issue with these re uh, kinetic reactions. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, because your kinetic depends on the temperature. Yeah, you can see that. So if you have a different temperature, that means you will have a different conversions, and then you you will have a different temperature outlet of the reactor. All right. Uh, so it creates this complication. So um, uh, Shafiq provided a, a, a better solution. Just let's, uh, what the hell, just use this um, conversion reactor, which is easy. Uh, but again, it's, a, it's, a, it's a all our learning point, so you can see. So that went, uh, so in this case, yeah, in order for that, re, uh, that kinetic reactions to work properly, we have to add this heater, make sure that the inlet is 250 degrees C. Right, so we have another heater right here. Uh -huh. Make a connection. Yeah, rename it to 2A, uh, exactly. I have to disconnect this. Exactly. Huh. Do I, uh, Go to a flow sheet, flow sheet. Yeah, yes. and then the break connect. Ah, exactly, yeah. Uh huh. Hi. Yeah. Just put this up there, yeah? I mean. Exactly. Hi. Yeah. Uh, make it nicer now. Uh, and put uh, the reactor a little bit to the right, and then these two exchanges to the right. Uh, All the way to the right, what is wrong? Hmm. Oh my god, <laughs> okay, looks Hold ugly. On. Yeah, we are waiting. Yeah, no, problem. so while while um waiting, so Nabi Mirza Nabil, so are we using the heat from stream 4 to heat up? That doesn't make any sense, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so uh, stream 4 is at lower temperature compared to stream 6. Stream 6 is the uh, outlet temperature of the reactor. Uh, the sorry, the outlet temperature you know, of the stream coming from the reactor, which is um, at higher temperature. So we are using energy from stream 6 to stream 4. The other way around. Um, any other questions while waiting? How do I fix this? Ah, that's how you do it. Uh, make another make a space first um uh, make a space first between them yeah uh. Uh. all right okay i think this is much better now i hope uh, no still this is still ugly so uh, get that director a little bit to the right okay you can also, if you see a uh, stream six, you can also, um, how do you call it, uh, rotate that. How do I rotate this? I don't remember, but uh, I yeah, just double click and see what happens. Uh, or maybe in the flow sheet, in the flow sheet. Flow sheet. Ah, you have this rotate, see? So you just need oh, okay. to click on that, uh, okay, and then yeah, can you rotate? Wait. Okay. Nice. Ah, yeah, now it's a bit nicer. And what is that stream? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And that one connected to the stream, eh, to the reactor. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, now we need to specify something in the E202 add, yeah? E202 okay. add. Okay, now I think I will let you deal with this. So what you need to specify? We don't know in the temperature, but we do know that the, uh, yeah, the exactly. Yeah, you need to make it 250 degrees C, so it will act as your heater, your ultimate. Uh, and, uh, and then the, we have specified the MCP delta T, uh, so then we know, yeah, remember your degree of freedom last time. And mm -hmm. then the, and then we just need to add one more, which then delta P. Design. Yeah, it's design, exactly, delta P. So typically, how much do you want to have it? Just 10 kilopascal. Um, okay, 10 kilopascal, a big six changer, but okay. Yeah. And All right, so we active now. Uh -huh. And then now you can put it active. Yeah. All right. So save. Ah, you can you can evaluate. Yeah, you can see. Um, well, I'm um, uh, now. Uh, can we? Can I just be used for membrane separation? Um, because um, this um, uh, what ISIS have um, and also applicable to all um, uh, process simulation so far uh, software um, um, uh, membrane or any other sophisticated technologies they are um, like really their performance is uh, uh, very much different yeah? depending on the materials, depending on the construction, depending on the system itself. So um, in this ISIS, I'm not really sure if we have such a membrane unit operation. Um, in the old days, in the old days, uh, oh sorry, ISIS, in this one I'm not really sure, we have to check it here later on in the, in the, in the palette. But then the, if you have a symmetry or, or icon, it, they have a, a kind of like a membrane unit operations where we have to specify that um, um, uh, what do you call that um, that permeability and then the pressure drop so in that sense uh, we have to specify these numbers which you get from your experiments right Shafiq you have done lots of uh, membrane separation so you know what to need what you need so um, you have to specify it that way and then we can do so um, so in the old days where we don't have uh, that membrane, we'll just need to know, okay, using this membrane, what do you want to separate? Say for example, you want to separate um, CO2 from methane, and then we will then ask the vendor, or we go for literature review, how much is then the permeability, or how much is then the selectivity, and that selectivity, we will use it as um, in a component splitter unit. You will see that later on. So because basically, this membrane is just to split components, right? Based on this, uh, based on the yeah, based on the similarity and properties. Uh, so um, that's what we did in the old days. Um, you could also then uh, the third one is um, uh, a macro model of your own. Yeah, in um, in this case maybe in the spreadsheet or in the um, spreadsheet of ISIS or maybe um, yeah, I think the spreadsheet of ISIS is better. So uh, make a model of your own um, uh, membrane performance and then to connect it to 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 to, to ISIS and it should be okay. Um, basically, um, okay. So uh, we'll discuss on Mirza a little bit later. So this E two O two, go back to that E two O two because we are now. See now, what do you see? Very strange things, yeah. I am not satisfied with this. Just zero point nine degree when in temperature. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. So um, what do you see? So you see a uh, temperature is very strange, which does make does not make any sense. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect, Aisha, in terms of temperature? I don't know. Should it be higher? Uh, why? Why? Uh, but there are changes in the... Yeah, no, uh, that, that's my next second question. Uh, on the temperature side first. Why? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, um, we expect it to be higher, uh, but then we need to know uh, why we expect it to be higher, right? Because yeah. Our, yeah, because our knowledge so far on the phase diagram, mm -hmm. so if it's only like one component, if it changes phase, mm -hmm. that means the temperature will stay constant, right? Yeah. And then if we have two components, the phase diagram tells us that the temperature should increase. 
<laughs> basically, yeah. right? So uh, because of these two knowledge, we would expect that um, the temperature here should at least stay constant if they don't want to increase. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it's, um, it's very strange. So um, um, it could be uh, the thermodynamic model could be one of the um, source of error. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so in this case, we can we can check on that. Um, um, how we check it is that um, we need to go back to the compositions of this stream and see what the composition is, and then we compare it to the like experimental value uh, to see yeah. where this uh, temperature should be. Okay. Yeah. So this is basically I don't know what oh, how much show it again show it again composition to be pure or uh, high purity of methanol right uh, yeah. So pure, high purity of methanol with some water and BME. Yeah, okay. Well, in any case, now, um, in any case, yeah, so uh, at least now we know um, that, that that something is not correct with the thermodynamic model, but okay, but okay. At least you get to your second point that uh, we see an increase in the vapor fractions. Mm -hmm, so yes. that means uh, this uh, two million of energy it will it is used to increase or to evaporate um, like um, uh, 32 minus 7 it's about yeah 25 percent of the liquid is being evaporated by this amount of energy yeah right from seven or eight percent to 32 percent so it's about uh, yeah 24 25 um, percent is increased um mm -hmm. but we know that temperature is a bit suspicious yeah mm -hmm. um so yeah. um ah, we could we could be because of the um uh, well it is definitely because of the um thermodynamic uh okay. model which is not uh, so much okay uh okay. you could you could check it yourself uh but i think in this in this in this session we can we can go on yeah uh, i think right. this could this can be your 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 um uh, uh homework to see at this pressure is 15040 mm -hmm. uh, um the the um okay i think now i know now i know um uh, because um ah, yeah I remember that in the heat exchanger you we specify not only the temperature outlet but you also specify the pressure right yeah. It's two things. So yeah. MCP delta P and MCP delta T and then also the pressure. And then we need these two conditions uh, so that we can then calculate the the, uh, the flash calculations. So in this case, we specify the pressure drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see now pressure at, 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 at the different pressure, at the different pressure, uh, the boiling temperature or the dew point or the bubble point, they will be different. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. That makes sense. Ah, uh, that makes sense. So now, if you if you try to 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 convince yourself, um, in this E exactly, yeah, huh? just remove that P, and then you will see. Mm, okay. All right. I think you should. You should. This is fine. This is okay. Mm -hmm. Now you put zero, and then you have um exactly that one. All right. So okay. you will have an increase in the temperature. Okay. So um so thermodynamics model is, is okay. It's just that now we need to have additional information so that we have specified the delta P and then temperature mm -hmm. would be a little bit lower. But the the most important thing I think is then the, the phase change as you as you have mentioned before. So mm -hmm. yes. um, so we know that the energy is not wasted, yeah. The energy is being used to heat or to increase the vapor fractions of the uh, liquid. Mm -hmm, yes. Um, that one is settled. So uh, thirty percent, and then in the the seventy percent remaining, we will be yeah hit it using that um, this guy. Yeah. Right, so um ah so we need to have that another eight. Um okay. So how do we decide on the delta p value? So um. Uh, number one is that based on experience. Number two is the we discuss with vendor. Number three is um, we go by uh, rule of thumb, uh, which is also based on experience uh, in the first place. 
So um, typically, typically uh, at the beginning, yeah, typically at the beginning in the um, in the in an engineering phase, we typically design it to be like a 50 uh, 50 um, kPa or half a bar for delta p uh, for yeah, heat exchanger of valve. Um, these two, I guess, uh, most likely. Um, the um, the higher the delta p means um, um, the, delta P? the higher the delta P means um, so if you see if you imagine a valve mm -hmm. uh, if you have a higher delta P across the valve what happens to the flow rate? Uh, we will lose energy no the, the flow rate I know that you lose oh, energy okay. that's for sure but then what happens to the flow rate? if you have a higher delta P across the valve yeah higher delta P across the valve so, um, are we going to have a lower flow rate or higher flow rate? Uh, high delta, uh, lower, I think. Am uh, I right? Am I wrong? Uh, lower. Lower? Why lower? Mita said lower, but why lower? Uh, Shafiq said higher. Which one is P2 is higher? No, higher delta P means if you have a valve, I don't know which one is P1, P2, yeah? but uh, we have to specify upstream and downstream. So upstream of, of um, a valve, say it's a fixed number, say, um, I don't know, 10 bar, upstream I of a valve. this is your knowledge principle. Yeah, exactly. This is your mechanical fluid, uh, your, your fluid mechanics, sorry, fluid mechanics uh, uh, course. So uh, we have a uh, upstream of a valve, we have 10 bar, and then downstream mm -hmm. of a valve, you have 5 bar. Okay, so that's one scenario. And then the second scenario is that upstream of a valve is 10 bar, but then downstream of a valve is 8 bar. Which one has a higher flow rate? The first one or the second one? The second one. The higher flow rate. Higher flow rate uh. or high <laughs> ah, Okay, I'll, I'll share my screen. Eh? Okay, sure. Share screen. Uh, there will be increase in flow rate. You know what the flow equation? Sorry, the remember the degree of freedom last time we discussed on the what equation is in the valve. Remember that? Uh, question for valve. Uh, what is the equation for valve? Equation, Shafiq. <laughs> ah. um, so now we have... Um, okay. Uh, it uh, was... Inserts. And then shape. Fine, why is this taking so long? I... So we have um, a line and we have a valve. Where is valve? Valve. So valve. And then the. Um, it's a 10 bar. And then I copy this, put it there, so this is then the 8 bar gauge. So, and then this is um, A, this is All right. B. Now, now, A and B, which one has the higher flow rate? Flowing across the valve. Uh, it's a quiz. This is fluid mechanics. So, um, how much do you get for fluid mechanics? A, A, B, or C? B plus, I think. B plus. <laughs> ah, okay, that's also fine. 
So now to make it A, to make this A, yeah? so from that B plus to make it A. So uh, which situation, situations A or situations B that makes uh, a higher flow rate across the valve? And then why? Um, not remember, which one do you not remember? B, I guess, yeah. depends on the outlet for it. Okay, go on. So in this case, B, you guessing B depends on the uh, outlet flow rate. So B is you saying that B is then will be having a higher flow rate across the valve. Mm -hmm. um, anybody? Mirza, S is eight. So what it means by higher flow? Uh, so yeah, okay, yeah, now. So what it means by uh, what it means by this number? Yeah, this number. What is what does it mean by pressure? Pressure is force. Is it on the? Is it by the fluid? Exactly. So um. So it's a force exerted by a um, uh, by a fluid on a certain mm -hmm. surface yeah so you have the same surface it's just like now we have different than force because they're different same same pipe um so um we can we can we can analyze this in two ways yeah number one the easiest one you go um or you see the the the, the flow coefficients of the you can google the 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 equations of the um uh, uh, valve so uh, you can Google valve uh, valve uh, flow equation. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So we can think in equations. If we don't have the um, uh, if if we can we don't have the um, how do you call it the feeling on the um, uh, physical world yet. So you can see now here. Um, if you put delta P uh, there, Q is then your flow rate, yeah? Q is then your flow rate. If you put del 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 delta P over there, that means Q will be proportional to that square root of delta P, or at least it will be proportional to delta P, yes or no? All right, yeah. Yeah, so that means if your delta P is high, your Q will be? Higher. Exactly. So in this case, the simplest way, which one has the higher flow rate? A. a will have a higher flow rate so that's one thing to think uh, in terms of equations yeah so that we can think based based on the equations yeah q is then proportional to the delta p higher delta p means higher q so that's that's one one thing uh, the the other uh, way to think about that is that um, um it's more like um uh, how do you call it? Yeah. Um, so we have a higher pressure here, and then the, here we have a, like a, a lower pressure, and this one is a somewhat lower pressure. So um, uh, if you push a liquid, if you push a liquid here, yeah, so if you have a higher pressure, that means this liquid will be then uh, pushed. So if you push it, um, it's a ten bar over here and then five bar over there. And then 10 bar over here and 8 bar over here. So this one is then pushing that directions, pushing that directions, and this guy is also pushing in that directions, in that directions. Yeah. yeah. So um, one is then pushing by 10 people, the other one is then pushing by 8 people. So you will have a 2, and then this one is pushing by 10, this one pushing by 5. So you could imagine now, um, you could imagine, yeah? So if you have like only like 5 enemies and then you are 10, and then you are now eight, ten, uh, 10, and then you have another one, you have uh, 8 enemies. So you can push this a little bit more to the right, right, or no? Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah? So that's also uh, one way to think about that in, in um, yeah, in uh, how to imagine that. So now you have more power here compared to this um, in relate, re relative to uh, to this scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's one way. Um. So I think that one is okay. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Now go back to that. Um. To your sl uh, screen. Um. Right. Um. So we are not. Um. I think. Uh, I don't know, yeah, um, because um, until now it's almost uh, one hour, so we only managed to add one 
exchange ya. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we did discuss a lot in terms of um, the chemical engineering aspect of this simulation, mm -hmm. right? Which uh, to me, at least uh, to me, eh, to me, if you ask me, uh, the chemical engineering discussions on this simulation is much more important than getting this simulation blindly. Alright. Because uh, by doing this, um, you will, um, if you if you understand the discussion, and it will be easier for you to replicate on your own or to solve uh, different problems later on. Uh, rather than just uh, following um, the, 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 the mass balance blindly. So now, uh, let's just add one more uh, equipment. What is then left? Uh, I did E203, and then we are now left with the valve, which has the pressure okay. reduction. So we will, we will okay, add the valve, and then we will then conclude for this week, and then next week we will talk about the distillation column for the one column, I think. I don't know if it will be enough, but we'll see. Yeah? The next week we will then discuss on, it, uh, on that column. So add this valve. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. So uh, now you just understand what that uh, uh, how to work on the valve. Again, that is eight, and then oh, that is nine. So, so what is the equation again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tapi so pressure in the nine is uh, how much? Is two bar. Pressure in the nine, two bar. No, ten point four bar. Oh, delta, delta P, sorry. Oh, delta P, yeah, uh, yeah it's about two, three, three bar. Two, three, three, sorry. Uh-huh. But that's what's in the mass balance, yeah? If you see, you need to make sure that your streamline is 10.4 bar, basically. Is it 10.4? No. Um, no, it's so 11. You have, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit higher, so that means you just need to increase the delta P a little bit. So Until that it's 10.4. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, 10.4. Um, yeah, 10.4 should be okay. Or 10.5 maybe, I don't know. Depends, huh? Okay, 10.5. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so, mm -hmm. um, so, um, in this case as well, now you can, you can play around, yeah, so, um, you can see, because, um, let's check again, yeah, close this again. So, um, we are using the, uh, you remember that, E202 cold, we you specify the temperature to be 278. Right? The E202 cold. You specify the temperature yeah. to be 278. And then in that sense, you will need uh you only release 2.2 million heat flow. Mm -hmm. Um so we have to pay for that the new heat exchanger. So the new heat exchanger will have to pay another 8 million. Let's try. Ah, so it. exactly. So right. let's just try to reduce it a little bit more. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right now, seventy-four percent. And seventy-four percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. I put this set. I uh, put this set set uh, side by side. Exactly. Is that, uh, uh, and then the other one, the E two O two cold. Ah, oh, cool. Uh, last one last uh, discussion yeah? so now you can see uh, these two heat exchanger they are basically um, like a shell and tube or like a counter current heat exchanger right yes mm -hmm. um, and then the one stream is uh, like a constant uh, pressure uh, constant temperature roughly uh, 154 154 and then the other one is reducing in temperature 374 to 160 degrees C can yeah. you can you imagine? Uh, I will share my screen and then you um start sharing. Yeah. Don't forget to to save your work here. Yeah. I don't know what happens. Why is this so slow? So now um this is my thing. My computer is doing something else. I Thank you. 
Come on. All right. That's one, and then the other one is um. Um. This way, right? So you have one fifty four, and then so so one fifty four. Or just they have a different um um uh vapor uh, fractions, and this is three seventy, three seventy five something. And then this is then 150, 160. 160, sorry, 160. So now from here, um, you stop at 160. Any reason why you stop at 160? Uh, stopping at 154 would, I don't know, I don't think it would be realistic. 160, why? I don't think 100, 160 is realistic. I think at least there should be delta T of 10 degrees Celsius. To drive the energy? Um, realistic or not, that depends on the practical side. Um, um, the, uh, the, 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 there are many heat exchanger design, designed mm -hmm. for a very small delta T, for example, uh, especially in the cryogenic situations, yeah? for the mm -hmm. uh, very low temperature. So the delta T we use there typically like a 1 or 2 degree C. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, one or two, um, uh, um, because we want to recover, or we want to, yeah, that, that the heat as much as possible. But uh, mm -hmm. in, 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 in typical process industries, like 10 or 20 degrees C is also common. Mm -hmm. So um, like uh, 60 to 54, uh, it's about 6 degrees C. So um, you could, you could, you could uh, increase this to, um, yeah, to 164, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then you will need to pay more on that preheater, uh, on that heater uh, upstream of the reactor. But that, uh, yes. having it um, to to 160 is also okay, because in the end, if we use typical uh, uh, shallow tube heat exchanger, we'll have to calculate the, um, the delta T LMTD. Okay. Alright. Right. So I'm not mm -hmm. really sure if you can still remember or you still remember how to calculate delta T LMTD. Uh, something that we will have to discuss next week. Yeah. So next all week, right. the uh, homework assignment for you all is that uh, how to calculate delta T LMTD, um, and then tell tell me how much is then delta T LMTD for this system, exchanger, mm -hmm. and then the um. Uh, there's another one here. Yeah? What did I ask you? I don't remember. What I have asked you. Uh, it was uh, on checking thermodynamic for... Oh, that one is... Uh, I think that one is solved. It was solved because we know that uh, because of the, the pressure difference, uh, we'll have a temperature difference in that sense. But mm, there is no yeah. harm. But there is no harm if you'd like to check more. Yeah, if it's... Um, there's no harm to do so. Oh, yeah. One last thing. Now I remember. Um, um, uh, now you can go back to that reactor, check what the compositions or the conversions. Check what the conversions of the methanol is. Uh, if it's still yeah about that eighty percent range, it is okay. But if it is not, then you know what to do. So we just need to make sure that the methanol is converted about eighty percent um, to just to mimic simply to mimic the mass balance that we have now. Yeah, it is still around eighty percent. Ah, okay. If it's still around eighty percent, then it's okay um, because we don't basically do anything on the on the on the on the inputs anyhow. So um, right. okay. So um, uh, please do more exercise, yeah, just try to complete this on your own. Um, calculate what delta T L M T D is and then we'll discuss again. Come back with more questions, yeah? Why don't uh, I receive any questions? Uh, doctor, I do have questions. Ah, very good. Next. Last question, uh, yeah? Uh, it's just that uh, this is a process-to-process -process heat exchanger, shell yeah. heat exchanger, and so one stream involves phase changes. And so how do we, like choose which stream to go shell side or tube side. Ah, very good, very good. So, um, depends on the applications. Uh, typically, uh, for a re if we are talking about reboiler, so reboiler, typically if we have like a, a kettle reboiler or U-type reboiler, so the, the, the shell side will be then the uh, boiling, uh, the, the boiling part, the boiling section, yeah? 
So the, the shell parts is then the boiling section. Because um, uh, it is easier than to control means um, uh, we have the tubes immersed in the liquid which is boiling. So we okay. just simply control the level of liquids in that um, in that shell, mm -hmm. uh, so that all the tubes are immersed, and that's easy to control. Mm -hmm. um, and the second one uh, we could also do, um, uh, but it's very rare because um, uh, in the in the thermosiphon as well, the um, the 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 liquid. Sorry, the liquid. The, the the evaporating part is flowing through a um, uh, the the evaporating part is uh, flowing through that the tubes. So there will be like a two phase flow in the tubes. So entering is liquid, and then the the, the liquid is then uh, changing phase into vapor, uh, and then we'll have two phase. So liquid and vapor uh, at the outlet of the tubes. So we have that situations as well. So um, in terms of boiling, it's not the main factor whether we have to choose uh, where we can choose the 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 to place where the liquid is. Uh, right. It is more it is more from the practical side. So for example, which is the uh, the most in the most cases, um, uh, for fouling uh, liquids or fluids. Yeah. Okay. We 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 put them in the tubes simply because we can uh, by using water jet we can just clean the tube. Oh yeah. Yeah, you open the yeah. shell and then clean the tube. But if we put the fouling on the shell side, there will be baffles, and then it's very. Uh, how do you going to clean that baffles? Yeah, there is some. There are many. There are many dead spots in the in the shell, compared to the tubes. So cleaning mm -hmm. on the tubes is easy. So fouling liquids is is uh, normally put on the tube side right. and it's also corrosive corrosive tubes uh, eh, corrosive tubes corrosive fluids are also typically uh, put in the tube sites because if uh, one tube is then corroded you can simply replace the tube right. easily so, but if, in uh -huh. case you have DME methanol and water I don't think you will have solving issues uh, no uh, it's all clean liquids huh? yeah so I guess the boiling liquid, which is stream four, the one that is preheating, would be on the shell side. Um, I mean, uh, which one is which one is it? The boiling. Okay. Um. Uh, well, you could do that. You could do that as well. Um. And one other thing as well, uh, for you to consider is that uh, we are going to get the heat as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that heat. Um, if you if we, if we think it this way, um, the heat is then coming from the stream six seven, um, yes. and then that heat we want to have that heat all of it uh, to be used in stream four five, right? Right. So if we put uh, if you if we think on the shell and tube, yeah, if we think on shell and tube, not plug in frame, but if you think on the shell and tube, the tube is on the on the inside of the shell. Yeah. So if we put the hot stream on the shell side, so that means the heat can go into the tubes as well as go to the environment. Mm -hmm, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's one scenario. And then if we put the, the, the hot streams in the tubes, uh, the only way uh, is to go to the shell. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's just that from the shell, we just need to make sure that the energy does not go from the shell to the environment. So... Um, uh, in this case as well, we could also consider uh, having the uh, uh, cold liquid on the outer part of the exchanger on the shell side. So we put right. the hot stream on the on the on the tube sides. In from that perspective. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Um. I'll see you. Yeah. Next week we will continue. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, doctor.